Uh, but yeah, let's let's certainly talk about reality again, and uh, with the notion of the cave. So just to revisit it a little bit, right? You have a couple levels of it, and uh, you have the people who are chained on the very what what sort of level are we going to call this? The most pathetic level? I mean, Plato really does betray this as a pathetic state of being. Okay. Oblivion, uh, well, in the sense that they're oblivious. They just don't know, right? Ignorance. But do they know that they don't know? No. They don't know that they don't know. Okay, so there is a sort of a, a uh, false confidence, a, a, a lot of energy, a lot of commitment there, the way that the, the, the allegory is written out, so that, you know, these people are invested in the shadow work, and they like to analyze it and think about it they just don't know what it's not really real so they're at the very bottom level here in chains okay and uh well this is a thought experiment and how much is plato like artificially making it because what, what if his interlocutor would say or socrates right what if one of them would say well why can't they just turn their heads and then well oh, okay they're chained their heads are chained so they can't turn their heads well maybe maybe out of necessity maybe it's meant to sign signify something else right they're in chains so it's as if they're a type of slavery here. Um, and uh, they can see only in one way, but since they've only seen it, and uh, you know, it's, it's given to you to understand in the allegory that they've never, uh, they've never even noticed their change. They can't see their chains either. Yeah. Well, no, but they, they can't interact with it. See, that's that's just it. Okay, that's a good question. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know exactly what it's like in the original because we, we get the allegory of the cave unless you know Attic Greek. Um, you know, you get it in translation. And uh, for all the versions I've seen, um, it's, it's you know, you're allowed to understand that they really do think they're interacting with the role. But then the question is, well, obviously, they're not shadow. Because the things in the world are interacting together, mm -hmm. Right. Not really right, and they they aren't they aren't putting up new stuff too, right? So yeah, I don't know exactly what right. level of interaction, but Couldn't they believe that they're interacting just by like. But there's no effect. Well, but they could believe that there's no effect. You try to so, talk like, to animals. Right, right. <laughs> so it's like, oh, they, they, do yeah, yeah. they do this. They do this when they. Well, hang on a that. second. Hang on a second, because uh, as an analogy, it's going to go only so far, and if you want. So, in other words, it's just sort of conventional to realize that there are limits to the analogy and not to push the analogy beyond that. So, if we are trying to suggest from this analysis that Plato is also signifying that we are completely with no free will at all, because obviously we can't, or, or not, I don't want to say free will, but without agency at all, because obviously we'll go, sailboat, I want a sailboat, and no, it never shows up because the people behind us, behind the wall, aren't putting up a sailboat then uh, if, if we're going to really take it to that level, then all of a sudden everyone in Plato's world is going to be aware of a sense of complete inagency, inability to do anything. But see, we obviously feel like we can do stuff. So I think it's just meant to signify that, you know, you do interact in the world, but you don't realize that the stuff you're interacting with is shadow. Okay. It's I shadow. It Oh yeah, no, but but see, okay, now that sort of signifies, and this is what I wanted to do today, is I wanted to really try to parse this analogy out, this allegory. Now, allegory, in, in its very definition of the word, uh, analegos, is, is saying something, or the, the schema of something, explanation of one thing, in terms of other, I mean, in other terms. So, he's using the story to say something about reality, isn't he? And... Um, that's no, that's no big surprise. But, but uh, you know, I, I think it's fair to say, you know, he, there is something that we're getting caught up in. And you know they're caught up in it because they're giving awards to people who can predict the next shadow. Or when one shadow approaches and another one is there, they can predict how the two shadows are going to interact. Like here's the tornado coming and here's the house. Or fire and here's the house. And then they can they know the cause and effect the shadows have upon each other, and the more they know it, the more they seem to give themselves accolades, right? Uh, so they somehow are buying into it as if it's important this interaction of shadows that they see, 
um, you are not allowed to to think that they can see their own bodies, that they can they can that they're aware of a remove between themselves and the shadows. And that's one reason Plato has all these things in place to keep their heads like absolutely still, you know. But uh, <clears throat> so that's that's one level. Can I just ask? Yeah, go ahead. I'm just uh, make sure you, it's nice and loud so that the okay. Sorry, um, I was just thinking. Um, because one of the ways I define humanity is that like your consciousness, you can think about things that aren't happening. Yeah. It's like these people can't think about things that aren't happening. Well, see, I don't know that the term is displacement. 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 Okay. Yeah, and so when you talk about this placement, you're talking about usually in psychology, you're talking about being able to think about something that's not there. But uh, I don't, I just, I just don't know. I mean, I don't know because again, it's 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 how far does the analogy go? And we have to treat it carefully because the fact that it might not mention something doesn't necessarily mean that it's not mentioning it was purposeful. In other words, Plato doesn't say, and these humans had. Uh, had sons and daughters that were outside the cave waiting for them. He never talks about that. So we, we're not at liberty to say they did have sons and daughters outside the cave. We just it just doesn't enter into the into the into the picture. So the fact that he never mentions that they can't interact, I don't think that at that point we could say, well, they don't dream because they might dream that they're interacting. We're assuming that they go to sleep, you know. Or the other thing is, I'm not sure if if, if it's if it's uh, important to bring that in because he's just trying to say something here. Okay, go ahead. In the way to tie it in, it's just like, if we imagine that people don't think about anything other than the real world that we're surrounded by, yes. we don't, I don't know, like, meta examine the world. Sure, or sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah that's I'm fine. wondering just. Well, hold on a second. Let's finish up. That you're not human if you don't think about. No, it just means you're, in, 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 I think in these terms, you're very close. Uh, Plato, Plato will have. And Socrates and Plato, I think it's pretty well established that they did not view you as an elaborate animal. You were something else. You were on a step above in the great chain of being, which came into articulation later, but it has its foundation here. But the person who can never think beyond this is, is, is well, may as well be an animal, you know, because you're just reacting to sensory data and to that. So if you're never stepping back and asking the reason why, right, and you're just enjoying it, or suffering it on a very pathological level, pathological being on a very uh, emotionally intertwined level. And, and, uh, but you're never trying to reinterpret your experience based on a higher set of values, but you're just interacting in the moment to the sensory data. You, you may as well call yourself a happy pig, which is what the, another essential question that Plato asks is, would you rather be a happy pig or an unhappy human. And um, the idea there is a happy pig gets what he wants. I mean, he's got the mud, he's got the food, he's got the sleep, he's got the piglets, he's got, I don't know what else you want as you're a pig, but you got it and you're happy. Uh, but you're still a pig, right? But think how happy that pig is. Uh, you see, and I don't know, right? That's anthropomorphism. Does the pig even know what's happy? It's just like doing what the body wants, right? And sleeping when the body wants to sleep, and doing whatever the body wants to do whenever it wants to do it. So you're you're sort of enslaved to that material flow of things, right? There's no aspiration. Well, yeah, no, I don't see any pig aspiring to be like, you know, mayor of the farm or anything. Uh, nothing against George Orwell, yeah. but <laughs> but uh, but the human is radically different. I mean, humans are able to displace, right? And we're able to think about it reflectively. But see, these people can't. Yeah. So that's just it. So let me ask you, is there indeed, is this a fair assessment of humanity? Is there a sector of humanity that either never takes the time to reflect upon something in terms of, is it actually real? Or, uh, or do many of them actually allow themselves to get caught up in it? And they may as well never think about it because their practical life never reflects any decision, any sort of uh, evidence that they are ever questioning its value and its reality, okay? Yes, sir. Thank I'm you for waiting patiently there. Like, when Jesus told parables to the Pharisees, he didn't incorporate everything in, into the parable. It was meaning that those characters were representative right. of the Pharisees. So right. what I'm thinking is in this analogy of the cave, those four or however many people are chained aren't representing all of humanity because he's yeah. talking in a discussion with these other thinkers. Yeah, they're certainly not. Thinkers. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what he's using is that these... These people chained down are the people 
like either maybe the, the other philosophers, the mathematicians, or the people that think that what, because he doesn't talk about them touching the things, they, he, they're thinking about how they predict things, what, yeah. predict the, the, well, the shadows interacting, yeah, but, like scientists predict natural phenomena yeah, or I something could, like that. That could be. I, I mean, I certainly agree with you that this is not a representation of humanity at large. Because you do have the one person that comes into the cave and releases someone, right? So there's someone that's free from this. And that one person goes out and sees the fire, then goes out and sees the water and reflection, and then looks at the sun. So he experiences a couple removes. So the fact that there is someone who's able to unlock him and there is someone who actually goes through that means that this is not all humanity. And, we're, and so, um, but as far as like which particular group is, is this to be pointed towards, like as Jesus is Pharisees, many of them were obviously the Pharisees or the Sadducees or by extension. Uh, legalists or whatnot, but anyway, um, um, you know, in this larger context, the allegory of the cave is, I think, book nine of the Republic, and the Republic is is just that—a book about politics, and 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 what goes into it has many other things in it, but it's a book about you know, well, what is the best way to rule or to manage a city, <laughs> a polis, <laughs> and um, um, it seems that the people that are chained right here and that are giving awards to each other are in fact a very minor class of politicians that uh, are always, you know, maybe uh, making decisions based on expediency or convenience or profit as far as like what is the right thing to do here, do we go to war, do we not go to war, do we build this, do we not build this, how, how, how well can you speak, how well can you argue this case, let's give you an award for being a great orator, you know, um, whereas the idea is they're not actually engaging with or following the truth. They're very willing to live a very unref in an unreflective state of superficial understanding. Um, so, you know, you know, I'm not. I can't really tell you when the Republic was written. Um, excuse me. The yeah, the Republic was written. Uh, but you know, you certainly find this applied against. Socrates in his uh, apology just before he is asked to drink the hemlock you know how he dies right the city of Athens put him to the prison because it's put him to death because they just got tired of him of, of the way he made himself them look like fools now they blamed it on the fact that he subverted the youth concerning gods the existence of gods but uh, there's really not much evidence that that could ever have stuck um, they were really angry at him because if you read the apology, which we might, I don't know, I'm still trying to pick some readings, uh, you'll find out that he disputes that claim rather quickly. But anyway, let's let's just talk with the time we have left about these removes, and let me get your, your thoughts on the removes. Okay, so you have obviously someone that's stuck to the shadows. All right, you're never allowed to think that this is real, although they think it's real. And then you have like a material cardboard silhouette of the thing. Here's a tree. Um, and then you have um, a cardboard silhouette, and the cardboard silhouette, and if you got the shadow of the tree, you got the cardboard or the wooden, whatever, the artificial silhouette of the thing, then you have, you know, the real thing out here, right, uh, and the house. Does um, Plato or Socrates believe that we can only discover the actual tree through like higher knowledge. We may be able yeah. to. I'll just tell the, you that. The, the card, like the uh, cardboard tree, is like, uh, say, like a real tree outside, and then the shadow of the tree is okay. like a symbol. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is the shadow any more real, any less real than the cut out though? Well, see, the, the shadow has the virtue of being one remove from the real thing and connected to this. Okay. The sun plays a huge part in, in, this, uh, in this story. The sun is the mother of all light here, right? I mean, it's the mother of knowledge, or the whatever, father, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, seriously, uh, sun worship, okay, which was a big problem in ancient times, a big practice, I should say. Um, I think it was a problem, but, but uh, I mean, there's, there's more to it than like, oh, let's worship something. There's a, there's a something in the air up there, oh, you know. They really, it was more sophisticated than that. They saw, for example, that nothing could grow without the sun. <laughs> you know, there was fecundity, fertility, power, enlightenment. Obviously, you can't see anything when the sun goes down. So, 
they they viewed this as something very very wow powerful and incredibly important. Um, Plato was a little more sophisticated because he's employing, you know, the mechanics of light and reflection and all that. But uh, it, it is still coming from here. Okay, so let's just call this the good. Um, and my, my question to you is, look, really, you have the tree here, the tree here, the tree here, and the tree here, and the tree here. How are we going to deal with this? And then you have someone that's, that's getting released, and he goes out. So when someone is getting released, he realizes all of this is fake, right? And he goes out here, and he sees, first of all, okay, let's, and one thing I enjoy always about this analogy is that the particulars are rather delicious. I mean, um, first of all, he is hurt quite a bit when he's in the sun, isn't he? I mean, he goes through a lot of pain, and this has been well noted. Uh, of when someone goes through, well, what do you think that, that signifies? Okay, and, and but but more than that, is it, well, yeah, definitely, you're, something is shifting in you, right? But it's, it's what? It's a whole, a whole, yeah, it's a whole view of things, a whole life, a whole system is being undercut, and, and uh, people call it a paradigm shift. It's a paradigm shift, and, uh, you know, it could be really, really choppy sometimes, and you might watch someone go through a paradigm shift, and and um, something has happened to this person. I, I've not run across this, so this is my term. Uh, I call it the ground zero sign. They've been given a ground zero sign in the sense of if this sign is telling me what it is telling me, everything else that I thought about, a lot of this is wrong. Okay, for example. Uh, I should just ask you to watch The Matrix if, if your parents allow it. I have it recorded. I recorded it. Yeah. <laughs> See, the trouble is, I went back the other day and I watched it, like the other year, and I watched it again, and I'm like, oh man, this is awfully loud. I forgot how loud this was. Oh, my ears. And I can't remember all the profanity, but it's up to you. Well, I'll think about some way. But in, 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 um, in this, remember when they're in, a, when they're in a, the house and Neo sees the cat, and then he sees the cat again? That's a sign that reminds him this is not a real house. See, or when uh, his his uh, his his troubles would be. Remember how psychologically troubled he was when his mouth began to disappear, or when he woke up and he's like, I mean, he was in shock for a while. Um, yes. I just want to say that just going back to see if that guy has been like chained up there his whole life. So when he finally went out, wouldn't he think like the real world? was the fake world because if he would take like a lot of convincing to find out okay wait a minute what did he think that the real world which one in his mind do you think would be the real world the real world would be the one with the shadow okay so he but he's used to it right mm -hmm. so he's very very comfortable with it and he's never been asked a question that is not real but when he goes out here there's some things he can't deny because he obviously can't deny that someone that he's out of the chains so he can never Plato never says that he, he still believes he's chained. He's beginning to believe that he's not chained anymore. And thus he, he understands the dynamic of the chain now and how he was trapped. So he thinks, he is beginning to understand, in fact, that this is fake. And it makes him want to throw up. I mean, it makes him want to, he, he just, it's like it's mental overload. He can't handle it. Uh, so, you know, just in future, when you watch someone just, go through this, it might look like depression. I mean, it really might. It might look like some psychological problem. It might just be a paradigm shift. And, and they're moving into a different view of reality, <clears throat> which if, if it happens um, in a convincing way in your own life, all of a sudden things you once valued, you no longer value. Because you, you are not, you're shifting between the categories, are they real or are they not real? Or on what level are they real? Are they real like signs are real, but they're not really the real thing? So all of a sudden, you don't get too worried about it anymore. And, you, and, and it's not a true treasure for you or a true, a true object of concern because it's just, it's just a sign. You know, this is, so there's, there's that. And then notice uh, that when the fellow comes back down here, right, in the allegory of the cave, he's, all, he's, all, he's troubled again. He has a hard time coming down here. And if he has to play this game, after he spent time out there, right, he has trouble seeing the, the seeing it in focus because he's blinded by the light, and he doesn't he can't compete. 
So what do you think Plato is doing here on a very practical level in his own life for Socrates? Because, you know, it's Socrates you saw. Plato's the author, but... It's like all the people that are just... This is reality. You don't need to know about this. It's This is our reality. This yeah. is what matters. So it's What's like the, that kind of just... The, uh, the, go ahead. Well, Plato's figuring that more than other people yeah. for life. They won't come. Okay, but, but, uh, but what happens if... A, a, a city says, we need a ruler, we need a king, or we need a governor. What, what, what is the best governor you can get? Someone who has known the truth, but he's represented here as, not, as never being accepted. The governor is the guy with the puppets, isn't it? I don't know. I really don't. I, I personally think that we're not asked to like, interpret it that oh, closely. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I, I do know that... I'm convinced that the idea here is if you get a philosopher who's convinced that this is shadow land, it's not real, but you, you're asked to lead a group of people that are ultimately concerned about this because they don't have their chains up yet, if you try to operate with them on that level, you're going to have trouble because you have trouble seeing these as sharp as they are seeing them because in the allegory, you know, the fellow who goes out and is and, and 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 sees reality as Plato describes it, and then tries to come back and interact in here, he doesn't cut it. Don't you? They're making fun of him. Did they say they beat him and all that sort of thing? I forget. Yeah. But that that was actually happening in Socrates' own life. I mean, he was trying to tell the politicians, this is not how you run Athens. This is not how you should do this, more or less, in different ways. And uh, and and they were, they were lampooning him in plays. They were they were. He was a laughing. He was the butt of many jokes. Uh, I mean, historically, uh, it was just so. He's this is sort of a def he's defending himself too there, but he does have a somewhat of a point here. So it's like politicians are really they're not really men step ahead of the people they're leading. In which case, politics. They're the sharper ones, aren't they? The sharper ones. According but to this allegory. So who is above the politician? The, the philosopher. Will the, uh, will the philosopher yeah. ever be accepted in common society? Yeah, but so, like, a politician can't better humanity. Pardon? A politician can't better humanity he can't. because he's on the same level as them. Right. The philosopher yeah. has to get the people first before right. he can lead them right. out. That's what, I think that's, that's certainly there in this allegory, but what, what uh, my question is, can, can the philosopher ever be accepted back into the society if he lets them stay on this level here? Lower himself in some he does. Ways. He has to, like, yeah. I don't know, like, play around with it and, like, you have to win the people before you can win over their mind. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, one thing, and this might be going too deep, but why does why can't he see it clearly? Is it because of. Because he, he, he has had so much light up there that if you ask him to get involved in this trivialness down here, in this lack of light place, he, he, he can't. He can't even think that way anymore because his mind is. His eyes are, 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 you know, you get out of okay. the sun. He's just working with the physical idea. Your eyes are right, right. Di uh, not dilated, but uh, very. Yeah. Is there yeah. some yeah. aspect of, like, when you get out of, yeah. you get out of yeah. bed yeah. in yeah. the middle of the night and you turn on the light in the back? Ah, you're, you're like right. that. Okay, right. so that's why. And then when you try but to get he, he is making, so he, he is he, making he, a he point. He really does need to lower himself. I don't think he's forever can go back to that. Right. Because he can't go back. But he can, maybe he can, uh, find a compromise in order to lead the people, but his ultimate goal was to lead them out here. Would they resist that? Absolutely. So the question is, why would you want to go why back? Why would you want to go back? Like, yeah. Why would you want to just because let them change it? Okay, now if you look at, at classical or medieval <laughs> literature, you'll find that theme. Is it, do I choose the political life or the philosophical life? The political life or the contemplative life? Do I have a duty to my fellow man to try to help them make the next step? And it's going to be hard because they don't want to get released. They really don't. I mean, I think at the end of it, they will be thankful. But while you try to release them, they're going to fight you every inch. They're going to close their eyes every inch. This is all very, very uncomfortable. Is that why like democracy doesn't work? Well, like, I, I, that, that's, that's actually like a question for a labyrinth or something. But I, I just want to ask you to think about one thing, okay? If this is the shadow, what would Plato say this is in our physical world right now? No. No, no. I'm talking about the tree. Like... In other words, the tree that I just walked by, I just walked by to get into this class. The tree that I just almost reached out and touched. Now I wish I had so I could say I, I prepped for this example. That physical tree, in fact, they're putting the lights around it, right? They're spending all this money to put their lights around the Hudson tree. 
Is it that? No. Is it that? No. Is it that? Because Plato doesn't believe that tree really exists, right? I think all you're I getting it is sensory data. Ground. Is it somewhere in there? So let me ask you, what really is this then? And then what is this according to Plato? Now we we may come back to it, or I may ask you to talk about this in a discussion or something. But we are done with time. Descartes, but, the, the reality of Descartes totally get the idea grasped in your mind. The yeah, you're getting there. I mean, Plato Plato did have his notion of the world of the forms. By the way, when you read when you read the philosoph the philosophy I ask you to read, every time you run across the word ideal. I D E A L, that is not necessarily meaning like the perfect. It's just meaning the, the ideal world in like Blackburn's writing means the world of ideas. I wish he would use a notional, the notional world. That's another way to refer to it. Anyway. Sometimes can you explain Plato's theory of forms and stuff like yeah. that in recollection? 